Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. This is cardiac telemetry camp, uh, cardiac lecture number 46, atrial rhythms, cardiac rhythms. From my sticky note, I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, and nursingcamp.com and also from my cracking the code on cardiac book. All right, let's get into it and here we go. All right, so some things with atrial rhythms and what's going on with atrial rhythms is that we're looking at the heart and the heart is separated into uh, four parts. Right? So we have a right side and then we have a left side, we have the atrial and then we have the ventricles. The focus that we're going to focus on is this atrial. And then we said that with the ECG, we monitor and lead to. And the reason we monitor and lead to is that we're looking at um, this ventricle, the left ventricle, and it should look like this. And we talked about in ECG that this is P waves, and then Q, R, S, T. We said that this side was chronic, meaning that problems with this, they can kind of go home with, you know, um, but it's generally not really that acute. There are some exceptions, but right now it's mainly chronic. Acute findings is on this side. ST elevations, ST depressions, and peak T waves, QT intervals are all acute. And we need to do something about that. So let's talk about these uh, rhythms individually. All right, so let's get into it. So the first one we're going to talk about is ST. So ST, why we, why we monitor ST elevations and ST depressions, ST depressions are um, ischemia. And that means that there is a problem going on. So if you see, um, and that could be an MI, it's, what's happening is, is that the oxygen is, not, is being starved on the cells. And so what happens is they can't repolarize. We said that this is called DR repolarization it can't repolarize because there's no oxygen so you start to see this depression start to kick in um, if that lasts for any period of time it can't it really has difficulty and then you see st elevations so st is what we monitor we monitor and lead to we're looking for st elevations and st depressions which is signs that there's a problem and that's a doctor's call if you see that then it's it's hona mb hona mb is the mnemonic that you basically um do for a patient who is having st elevations st depressions for chest pains and mi high follows oxygen nitro times three uh, aspirin uh, morphine and beta blockers that's the mi protocol please see my mi lecture on that the next is sinus bradycardia. Now the key here is sinus. SA node, which is the pacemaker of the heart, goes to the AV node. That starts the contraction. And that is also the SA node is the P wave. And what happens with sinus bradycardia is it doesn't make sense that the heart wants to slow down. Okay? And that's an important concept to understand that when the heart is slowing down, that's a little sinus fast. Um, when the heart is slowing down, what do I mean by sinus brady? Sinus brady is heart rate less than 60. And if it's less than 60, um, it doesn't make sense. Because why is, unless they're an athlete, and I have a, a previous lecture on sinus brady, so please see that. But the principle is this. Are they symptomatic or are they not? And what it looks like is, you count the QRS complexes. What I mean by that, this is a QRS complex. So in a six second strip, you'll count these. This is one, two. So this person's heart rate would be 20, which is not enough, right? But whenever you see a strip, you will count the QRS complex. So this person's heart rate would be three, 30. Okay. So if it's less than 60, sinus brady. Remember, medications generally are the cause of this, like uh, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or sick sinus syndrome, or something's wrong with the electricity. Um, but I cover that in my sinus brady lecture. Please see that. Another atrial rhythm is uh, sinus tack. So sinus tack is 100 to 140, and um, it looks normal, okay, but it's very fast. 
you know, it's very fast. And it's generally the rate. So you see a six second strip and then you'll count how many QRSs are in it. And if it's greater than six seconds, uh, greater than 100 to 140, um, look for the underlying cause. And that's most patients do wish. And that's a previous lecture and that's reasons for high heart rate. So generally the good thing about this is, is that with high heart rate, that's the boat coming. Look for the problem. Look what's going on underneath. Is it medications, oxygen deprivation, trauma, pain, and so on. The next one is supraventricular tachycardia. Now, supraventricular tachycardia is super fast, super fast. And what's happening is, is the SA node to the AV node, it's really firing, 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 firing. And it's up here in the atrial. Well, the issue is, is that that goes really high, 180s, 280s, 285, somewhere on there. It's really super fast. It's not 140, 100 to 140. That is sinus tack. If it's greater than 180, 185, the, the treatment for this is we need to flatline them. And I talk about that in another lecture with adenosine. Adenosine is on the scene to stop PSVT. Um, so what it does is it flatlines and hopefully the person converts to sinus rhythm. You start with six milligrams first, but generally when you see this rhythm, you have them vagal down. Vagal by bearing down stimulates cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve, and it slows down the heart rate. So we do this non-invasive first before we do medications. But then we give medications six milligrams, and then if that doesn't work, we repeat 12 milligrams. If that doesn't work, we need to shock and give them electricity. Please see my supraventricular SVT lecture for that. Next one is atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is also above the ventricles. The problem is this, the SA node. It's not working, right? So we said that the SA node in a normal is the P wave. Well, the interesting thing with um, S, uh, atrial flutter is that you have this going on. And you have cutaways. There's a problem with this P and something else is dominating it. And you get into what's called three to one conductions. Three to one conductions. Or it could be four to ones. I often think uh, this as a saw. Okay, saw upside down. And uh, I say W, I know my accent's bad. Um, Flutter cutter waves, so it looks like cutter, right? So then there's a difference between fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation is more acute in the sense that a person with atrial fib, um, again, they have no SA node, and you have all these conductions happening down here. And it doesn't really know. The AV doesn't know what's going on. It's thinking there's an SA node, so you see this fibrillation. And then the, uh, the, the ventricles just contract whenever they can because there's no P wave for it. So this is a general overview of cardiac lecture, uh, atrial rhythms. Uh, sinus tack is sinus bradys, sinus uh, SVT, atrial flutter, and atrial fib. Each, I have individual videos on each of these, and please see those. But this will give you your atrial rhythms and what your basic treatments are. When NCLEX is testing you on it, you, you'll basically have to know the basics of this. Um, that's it for me. I, I'm nursing camp, and this is uh, Kevin, and I can be found on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, uh, Etsy, and nursingcamp.com, and we'll see you next time.